Welcome to 10 Talks, real conversations for champions with champions, where a champion life is a 10 life. Thank you for joining our team today. I'm Carlette Patterson, your head sports life coach at the Life Training Academy, and it's our desired outcome to share our passion for sports life coaching by training you to live a 10 life. You and your life matter. Let's get coached. Welcome to 10 Talks. We are blessed today to get to share a conversation with a dear friend of mine, Arani Clark. He lives in New Zealand and he is a former All Black and just really starting a new position in a role that is near and dear to his heart. And I'm just excited for you to get to meet him, connect with him. And we're going to dive into conversations today that are all about really the, the power of change, the power of of challenges and how we get through it by igniting the power of teams. So Arani, welcome to our 10 Talks and just give us an introduction so we can get to know the journey that you're on. Well, thank you, Kelly. It's great to be with you um, today. Uh, it's, it's, this, this is absolutely a 10 moment as well. And um, I'm so great to be part of the um, part of this as well. So we call it our uh, in 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 Aotearoa, this the co papa or the mm. the really the foundation for this program. It's wonderful. Well, greetings everyone. Warm Pacific greetings from Aotearoa. Um, it's uh, my name is Aroni Clark, and as um, as Khaled has uh, beautifully alluded to, that uh, I've had the absolute pleasure of living my dream as a as an athlete, um, which is a few years ago, playing for the All Blacks. Um, I was a seven-year-old boy when I first had that dream to play for the All Blacks. To, but um, but the thing about it, though, was that I'm not a native to New Zealand. Um, and so a young child here as a seven-year-old dreaming that one day that he could play for um, for the international, the national side, is quite a huge for us as Pacific. And so living that dream has been wonderful. And as Khaled said, that so now that being in a, having lived my dream and played for the All Blacks, a big part of my heart has always been about influence. Mm -hmm. And I was influenced by our previous um, All Blacks, um, who are my role models. Um, his name was Sir Brian, or Brian Williams. He's now a Sir, now here in New Zealand. Mm -hmm. And I really, one of the things I recognize about um, Sir Brian was that he was always in the papers for the right reasons. And it, mm -hmm. played, a, it played a huge, it made a huge impact on me. And so what I realized when I became an All Black, that it was more than just about playing the game. It was also about the way that I impacted the next generation that were coming through. And so as I've gone on and finished the game, it still continued to be a, a part of my heart in terms of that calling of influence over our lives. And so now my new role at New Zealand Rugby is the Pacific Engagement Manager role. And so what that means really is that you know, you have the ability now to advocate more for Pacific people um, within the rugby community, but and wider as well. Rugby is such a huge sport um, within New Zealand. Um, certainly, there's a lot of rugby that's gone global now, um, even more so over the years. And so it's great. It's an Olympic sport now, which is excellent. And But the thing about it here is that um, really, in essence, it's still that calling of influence. And so I advocate in our Pacific, um, for the Pacific communities. In the mainstream, if you like, and um, one of the raw part of this role really is lifting the cultural responsiveness of our mainstream services, our mainstream um, provincial unions, about understanding how do you connect and how do you work better with people from Pacific nations. And so it really is about um, really connecting. It really is about creating the 10 moments, if you like, more for, for, for our Pacific people here. And given that New Zealand is the biggest Pacific population outside of the Pacific nations. So it makes sense that part of my heart and vision for this role is really building a template for the world in terms of understanding if they want to know how do you connect better with Pacific people. Um, New Zealand has rugby has a template here that the world can really see to. And especially if you look at the international rugby teams today from different countries, there's a sprinkling of Pacific people in those different teams as well. So it makes sense for me and many others here in New Zealand that really, that we really do create a template for the world to look at how do you connect better with people of Pacific nations? Well, Arani, that is just a beautiful platform for you. I know it aligns beautifully with your heart, your spirit, and, and your deep desire to be a real champion, a real champion for change, a champion for committing 
you know, helping people to really figure out who they are and what they're passionate about and, and using, as we all love in sport, to use our platform for social good and to really be champions for change. So as you watch your film, both as a, an athlete and now as somebody who's a person of influence for that next gen, what would you say are some winning strategies for really going through times of change in this season that we're in right this moment? We none of us have a playbook for really how to do how our world was shut down with the coronavirus. And, you know, as athletes and as executives and business owners, we like to follow a playbook. We like to know how to win. We really, you know, are committed to that. And our world has been given an opportunity to completely come together for global well being in a way that we want to make sure we're really honoring the people that are our frontline people. We are incredibly grateful for the true champions and the true heroes that are going out every day and really making our world better, safer, taking care of us from a health perspective. And we wanna give hope. We wanna give hope to mm -hmm. them. We wanna give hope to the athletes that we have the honor of, of working with, the coaches that we have the honor to work with, the executives, anyone really listening to our story. We want to give you hope and be able to really learn from our conversation. So Ronnie, let's talk about a season that has loss that shows up in it that really is nothing that we had anything to do with. So, you know, we like being able to control our controllables and feel like we know what we can manage. Watch your film and think about the winning strategies that you have learned both as an athlete, as a father, as a husband, as a, you know, just a man committed to being of integrity and really, you know, what shows up for you when we, when we talk about loss? Yeah, well, that's a great question, Carlette. And it's, it is particularly for these times that it's so global. How do you deal with those sort of things and what do you do and how are you able to respond? And I always, I suppose I always keep coming to that, that uh, the calling of influence over our lives and what can we do use here that will be able to really help people and I think there's a couple of things that spring to my mind straight away because it's that old saying that it's not always about you. <laughs> and so, <laughs> really, and I think that's probably one of the greatest things that I've learned over the years, um, dealing with, as an athlete, dealing with non-selections, dealing with all of a sudden changes that occur, that all of a sudden your, what you thought your career was going on one, one way, it's all of a sudden it changes another way. And it's the ability to learn to accept what's happened, especially the things that you can't control. And I suppose one of the, the winning strategies that I have really been able to tap into is just honoring the gifts and recognizing some of the other gifts that I have given the platform and the privilege that we have. And a couple of things that we've really been able to do is, and especially through this role, obviously there's a lot of, at this time, there's so many people, it's almost like that experience of a deer looking into lights and just mm -hmm. absolutely stunned. And so as an organization within New Zealand Rugby, really, I think internally before, firstly, has really been about the people and what do we do using our gifts and using my role? How do we influence in a positive way? And it's been such a quite an experience here for me was tapping into the gifts. For example, and obviously my, I have a real very pastoral heart. Some of my background is in counseling. Some of my background is in leadership. How do you lead mm -hmm. through these times? How do you how do you reach into the hearts of our people and we can really begin to walk them through a process? How do you begin to treat and walk others through that they with the anxiety of I may possibly lose my job here and there's many that will go through this and it, it's it, it's um, in terms of in the world in New Zealand it's absolutely no different so how do you begin to walk people through these changes and so it has been that time of um, where I've recognized the gifts that I have to be able to walk people through those other parts of who I am other than the athlete, of walking people through those times, of helping them to understand their best you, what does it look like, what other gifts, what other abilities, what other things where you're wired in terms of your DNA, what does it look like, and how can you create something positive another, or in terms of recognizing a career path, or something of those sort of uh, things. And those are, I suppose, have been some of the key things where I've had to stop and and stop instead of asking the question why why did this have to happen to me why didn't i get selected why did this pending up coming at this point in time for example i've only been in the role for about a week and then bang global lockdown 
And so I'm, I'd be asking myself that question, will I still have a job? Will I still have a role? Right. And so I've been tapping into even as I'm speaking, it's something that I'm reminding myself about as well. So, and no doubt millions of others will be doing the same thing. But I think one of the, the real positives that I've really stopped to ask myself, and even as an athlete was, rather than asking the question why, has been asking the question, what? What am I gonna do about this? How am I going to respond? And then going back then again. And so really taking myself through that process of, well, what have I got in terms of um, what are my gift things? What were the things that I'd love to do, tap right into in terms of having gone through that transition as an athlete into the next stage of my life, looking at some of the things that really, that, uh, that, um, that really gave me purpose, that really gave me excitement, things I just really, I could really um, lose time track of time with. Mm -hmm. and it was really about tapping into those sort of things so for me those have been some of the winning strategies that I've been having to to deal with here as an organization um, but also to having a self-assessment in terms of what I'm doing as well is really as looking at some of the other gift things and some of the other areas where I'm wired to and helping people to walk through that process of rediscovering themselves and rediscovering other gifts that they have that also too, that could lead them in a different pathway. So. Uh, Arani, yeah. I really want to dive a little bit deeper into that leadership component that you talked about, because I think in times of great change, it is our ability to number one, lead ourselves. And team, I hope that you heard that winning strategy about yes, anchoring in our why, and also really exploring and inquiring and being really curious about what, what is it that I can do? What is it that I'm blessed with? What are my strengths? And so, Arani, as we think about leadership, let's talk about how you have led yourself into the different transitions that you have gone through from an athlete to being a father to being a husband. I mean, your, your list of things and roles that you play have grown tremendously as you've developed as a man. And I think as we reset and really have this moment in time, this season, to evaluate ourselves, it really is nice to look back at our film and, and think about what we're passionate about, what, what we've learned, our lessons that we've learned. And so let's start with leading yourself and then we'll talk about leading others. Absolutely. There is a Samoan proverb that says, ole ala ile pule ole tautua, which means the pathway to leadership is through service. And we were taught this um, as youngsters, very, very young, to be able to serve, to serve our families, to serve where you are in terms of whether it's in, your, in, in the athletic world or in the business world, where you're working, where you are, that you serve. You serve your elders, you serve people in, um, in terms of your people in authority. And I think those have been the really kind of the values that have been instilled in me and many of and my siblings and many young Pacific people the ability to serve and I think that's been always that the heart over the years even through my um, the days of uh, as an all black as a professional rugby player that still was that hard to serve but still being able to express your talent and other things and over the years one of the things that's been really um, that has been important for us and as I mentioned before was that also the ability to to give back to give back to the next generation, to be able to give back to family, to give back to your community. And so it always been instilled in us and other great um, Pacific athletes and role models like Sir Michael Jones. And so these were kind of the things that we kind of passed on to the next generation. So it was, it was passed on from us, from our parents. And so it was in, a, in an essence, it was our role then to continue to pass that on. And so over, since trans, so transitioning out of rugby, there was still that heart to serve and in essence, and I, I, I worked together with a, with a really good friend of ours, Harit and Ken, uh, Ken Youngson, that we started to, my heart and my passions were still for our sport. And so there were, we created an organization called Quantum Sport that we've really been able to use the platform of sport and develop character. Um, and so it was sport, what a wow, what a platform that we had that, to be able to use sport, the, the, the values and the, and the principles of sport and build character. And, and he says, that's what sport really, I suppose, was created for and or has a great opportunity to do. And it was a few years after that, though, my heart, I, I felt a real calling back to our Pacific communities. And so the, over the years, it really was, and it was through, I worked in education, I worked in, in health, 
um, in Pacific Health and Pacific Education, really influencing, advocating um, over the years on, on helping to lift the cultural responsiveness um, for our mainstream services. In education, it was really about lifting the horizons of our young people to consider something more than just where you are. What pathway do you want to uh, do? You want to walk down, given your 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 passions, given your um, your 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 talents, and so those were kind of some of the things for me was really trying to help our Pacific to really come through in those areas. When I was working in the last decade, I've been working in Pacific Health. Um, lifting cultural responsiveness of mainstream services, lifting the leadership capacity of our of our of our workforce coming through, and then really encouraging our uh, uh, to consider for our young people a career in Pacific Health, because we have such low statistics in terms of with Pacific here in New Zealand, of of accessibility into into mainstream services, into our hospitals, into our health, and so there are many things where we really are in the low end of the spectrum for Pacific peoples, even suicide. We have a high rate of suicide. In, in fact, New Zealand has the highest rate in terms of attempts of suicide mm -hmm. within the Pacific and Maori community. And so those are some of the things really where I begin to see how in my heart to the ability to serve and also really to encourage and lifting the leadership capacity of our, of, of our communities right across our sectors. And so many of us have been able to use the platform of influence to begin to look at programs where we can um, expand the leadership mindsets of our, of our Pacific communities and also really trying to get them in places of influence. For example, for in governance. Um, so we're really trying to create pathways um, so that many of our Pacific communities can be sitting in the tables where they are making the decisions. And so these have been some of the couple of things we're really trying to help in terms of leadership. It is about where I am and the ability to influence where I am and use that. Um, and also to then to create pathways for others that are coming through that can sit at the tables and make decisions as well that will influence um, positively for Pacific communities. Well, Ronnie, first of all, I want to just give a shout out to Ken. He's the one that introduced us. And if we talk about leadership, he has led from his heart many, many years ago. I think it's been maybe 15 years when he first brought me to New Zealand. And what an incredible, just um, kind of a challenge for both of us and quite a, a bit of courage for both of us mm -hmm. to take a true leap of faith. And uh, I'd never been to New Zealand, didn't really have that even on my goal sheet in any fashion. And he kind of tapped me on the shoulder and said he would love to bring sports life coaching to New Zealand. And he is the one who really had the vision to, to give the gift of sports life coaching to New Zealand. And so Ken, thank you from our hearts and thank you for being the leader that you have been committed to being and just that champion for connections because mm -hmm. without Ken, you and I would not have this beautiful conversation. We wouldn't have all the opportunities that we've been given. So that's just a, an example of gratitude as we mm -hmm. anchor in service as a winning strategy for really leading ourselves. And Arani, I love where you started with, it's all comes from a place of service. And mm -hmm. as we talk about in our sports life coaching, our MeQ skills, which is new, I think, since you and I have been together. Yeah. yeah, we've taken our 3D tools and we've transitioned those into really being the intelligence of me. And we call it MeQ. Yeah. We're really understanding who am I? What's important? What are my strengths? How can I really know myself at the highest level so that I can connect to my community? I can connect to my family, my relationships, and my world to really make the biggest impact. And we train so much as athletes to be champions in our sport. It's really been my desired outcome to train ourselves as people to be great at understanding our talents and our really playbook for our life so that we can show up and connect to other people and, and show up at 10 and really create a 10 result. So, you know, mm -hmm. you and I are part of that fabric that's been woven on just us having the opportunity to go for what's important to us, honor our hearts, lead from a place of service. Mm -hmm. And all of our MeQ work is done in three dimensions. We talk about 
professionally for success, personally for significance, and philanthropically for service. So mm -hmm. Arani, as we anchored into leadership for self, you just spoke right into that service component of, you know, we like to call it sports philanthropy. Anybody can call yes. it, you know, whatever you want to name it. Our passion for sports philanthropy is to give hope. And you just described that in such a beautiful way, not only giving hope to ourselves so that we have the power, the compassion, the purpose really to give and, and ignite somebody else. So let's step into the next component of that. We've got the leadership of self. We really heard about that power of influence, setting ourselves up for success. And now as we step into leading others and we use that platform, I want to go to really what you spoke about in terms of well-being, because this is the, the development of a whole person. And if we just focus on how to be great at our careers and we leave behind our heart and our relationships and, and our health, mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, you know, unpacking what that well-being means, take us through really what you've discovered on your journey as to be what how can people really anchor in well-being in a time of great loss, loss of identity, a lot of anxiety, a lot of fear in a world that's uncertain? How do we make sure that we are all about well-being? <laughs> that that is it almost sounds. Uh, we were just talk, we were we're creating a leadership program for a lot of our um, Pacific leaders at the moment. Just currently, um, another program in terms of just around governance. And we were, as we were sitting there amongst other Pacific leaders, one of the things that we talked about was, well, wait a minute, when we talk about oleala ile pule ole tautua, that with the pathway to leadership is through service, in our Pacific communities, what that meant was, was that you just serve and serve and serve and serve and serve, even when you're burnt out, you just serve and serve and serve and serve and serve, and you're burned out even more, but you keep serving, serving, serving. Yeah. And you know, and, and so for us, when we talk about well-being and looking after yourself, it, it, it's, a, it's such a contradictory, it's such a contradiction to how we were raised. But now for a lot of the young, it's what we're trying to now change the narrative of is, yes, as leaders, it is our heart. It is important for us to be able to look after our families, look after our communities. But most importantly is understanding that if you cannot be strong and look after yourself, you cannot then be strong for your families, for your communities as well. So then we're really trying to change the narrative, change the mindset and the heart set of our people to make sure that, that you look after yourself first, because it would, and in some of the other leadership programs where we've talked about this, we've had sat and debated over that because we just couldn't get away from the fact that no, you just serve no matter what, mm -hmm. you give no matter what. And so really now we're trying to change it. So yes, absolutely, we're not taking anything away in terms of our heart to serve, but what we are saying to you is that you need to look after yourself, most importantly, mentally, spiritually, physically, emotionally, uh, with the key aspects. And I, I like it too, Kelly, and one of the things that, one of the models that we use and was created, we a framework called the Konokale model, which talks about a specific person and it looks, in the metaphor of a of a fale, if you like, or a South Pacific house, it has its poles, it has its um, roof, it has its foundation, and what it begins to describe is a Pacific person. How the culture is important to be strong in your culture, and understanding that a protective and strength factor of a Pacific person is ensuring that the foundation is their fano, their ainga, also too their culture is important, um, and the poles in terms of the physically or your tino atua. Uh, mentally, your mafo fong is strong. And so looking at these key aspects of this fale, and that really describes what a, uh, what a Pacific person is, and being strong in those key areas. As we know, energy is, 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 is limited. So <clears throat> the importance of ensuring and understanding, how do I strengthen myself emotionally? How do I ensure that um, physically that I'm looking after myself so that I can engage better in life? And so it's one of those areas here that we talk about is really in coming back, ensuring in those key areas that we are looking after ourselves as leaders. And it's slowly starting to change, um, Khaled, um, for our Pacific people. Um, and 
And so I think that's probably the real positive thing is really re-educating ourselves again and bringing that change. And especially in these times now with this global pandemic, and ensuring that we are looking up with so much fear, anxiety, questions about how are we going to how are we going to feed our family? How are we going to look after? What's my career going to look like? Will I still have a job in the, in the next few months? And Ronnie, so really let's, is, let's talk about the power of, of courage and strength mm -hmm. and how, how it's such a competitive greatness champion that can ask for help. I mean, that is something I think that so many times we have these definitions of what a champion is or what competitive greatness is. And a lot of times it's about our own power and our own strength versus that ability to really know from a well being perspective, I need to take care of myself and I can be stronger by connecting with other people, by, by sharing my truth and, and honoring my heart and, and really asking for help. So what are your words of wisdom for people out there who are in these real times of great challenge and, and great uncertainty? What are your words of wisdom about the courage to ask for help from a strength perspective? Yeah, absolutely, Carly. I think first and foremost, we are beings of relationships. And it's important in terms of connection is one of the important things for us as just as human beings. And in, in terms of that, that ability to connect with, with others to, so that, again, it is about that, the, having the strength to be able to ask the, 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 the power and the question about uh, being bold enough to really recognize, whoa, I need some help here. And recognizing that first and foremost and understanding that, again, to be able to to, to the, the, the power of connection, the power of talanoa, the power of talk, which is really, really important in recognizing that as well. And um, I think that's, that's probably one of the first things that, uh, that I can really encourage is the courage to ask. As, and I, I come back to us as Pacific peoples, that is probably one of the hardest things for us to do with the ability to be able to just to go and ask and recognize, I really need help here, but we don't. And so we're recognizing here in terms of our, even our own mental well-being um, for, the, for that, just purely for that as well, is being able to ask and to talk about what we're going through. And, um, and then because we're obviously we begin to isolate ourselves, but we're not. We're created for, for connection. We're created for relationships. So I think that's what's really key and important here is having the power, the courage to step out and boldly to ask, hey, I need help here. Well, that is just a gift of pure love, hearing those words and knowing just the value of them. One of our tools in our sports life coaching for people to really understand who they are, both as competitors and as these people of great passion, is competitive greatness. I'm sure, Ronnie, you remember when you were going through all of our training and we've been doing all of our coaching together for years and years that really anchoring in competitive greatness is a great place for an athlete's heart to understand whether I'm doing it professionally, personally, or philanthropically, I can still bring that competitive spirit that I have inside of me and have it show up in such a just unique and powerful way. So let's break that down a bit. For us, the formula for competitive greatness is truth, faith, and love as we define it. And so, Arani, take us through kind of what your truth is your truth, your definition of faith and your power of love as you are stepping into this new season for competitive greatness. Yeah, I love that, Khaled. There is, people have always, the thing about I loved about sport was obviously that competitive element. And there are so many things that we can bring out of our, out of our sport um, into, our, into the transition to the next phase of life, in any phase of life actually as well. And the thing about that I, I loved too was that really was, I, I, I think naturally I was not, um, a nat I mean, we talk about natural competitiveness. And the thing about it uh, that I've really learned about myself over the years was that ability to, well, one, that recognized I was gifted in the sport. I had the, this, this ability to really um, to, to play this game of rugby recognize the the natural ability I had but also to but I had the applic had to have the application mm. to sharpen the skills and to do really well because in my mind was about really being the best and and I, I suppose as I as I journeyed through sport was not just being about the best in the world was really recognizing that I had to be the best me mm. um, I had to be the best me in terms of 
uh, speed, in terms of everything, in terms of sharpening my skills, that I always asked the question to myself was, how good am I? And so how good am I meant that I had to do everything physically to be able to get my body to that place where I could ask it to do something on the field and bang, I would go. To being the best of me would mean that how can I really mentally apply myself heart-wise? We had an old trainer that said, Ronnie, body on fire, head in the fridge. And then we added to that was in a heart at peace and what that looked like. And so it really gave us that competitive that competitive edge. And so those things that I really began to learn that so in my journey and over the years has been really um, from that since that time was was moving into the next phase of life and using those same approach about having that having the, the body on fire ready to go head in the fridge in terms of mentally really understanding that I was sharp I was aware I recognized what's happening and really applying myself but yet having a heart at peace knowing that the world around me, that I've done everything that I can in terms of being able to influence well, help others through um, along on the journey with me and serving my family, serving my community. That's what it meant. That's what it looked like. And I, I think so for me was really bringing those same things into, into the next phase of life, even in this role that I am. Having that body on fire meant that I'm looking after myself, being able to do the work that I've been asked to do in terms of this job description. Um, having the head in the fridge was recognizing that, making sure that in terms of just mentally, how am I able to really refresh myself? How am I able to really keep myself sharp mentally as well um, and be present? And then also to having that heart at peace. And you talked about the elements of faith as well, um, Khaled. And for me, that was an, a very important part of who I am as important. It's always been um, an important part of my journey through um, sport as well, that everything revolved around my faith and understanding my love for God, recognizing that he is a creator that, that, that gave me this ability to be able to, that blessed me with this ability to play sport, but it also gave me the responsibility with a platform to be able to influence positively this world around me and that, that uh, and being able to use that in, in essence to be able to 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 um, to influence, I suppose, if you want to forget a word. So yeah, though there's some really great elements that I'm I'm loving when you're talking about, um, and that I resonate with so much. And I know many other athletes and anyone will really resonate as well with as well too, Khaled. So as we talk about that anchor of love, and Arani, you shared so beautifully the truth, faith, and love component. Your truth being that you had the ability, and yet you had to practice, practice, practice. And team, I want you to hear that, is that as we go through this really challenging time, what we're doing with our time, is are we investing really in our future, mm -hmm. or are we anchoring in fear? And so instead, can we really, you know, go into the heart of who we are as a person and discover our truth? Our truth is this is a challenging time. We may be afraid, unsure. And my truth is I have skills. I have transferable skills from whatever I was doing, you know, before any of this happened to how can I strengthen them? My truth being how can I invest every day in winning the day and being my best self for my family, for my community, reaching out, asking asking for hope, asking for help, you know, the things that I need, making sure that my truth is I have the ability to express it, having faith in myself, in my community, in my support team that I do go and ask for help with, as well as if you have faith in God or whoever it is that you have faith mm. in, we support that. And then really coming to a place of anchoring this competitive greatness in love. And that's what you've heard Arani share so beautifully from his heart with it being about passion and purpose and serving. And, and so if we can redirect all of our energy in this time of great challenge to what do we love? How do we love? Who do we love? What do we want to come out of this in a way that is love anchored rather mm -hmm. than fear-based? So Arani, what are your words of wisdom as we sign off with the team really saying, you know, we've got this, we can do it, we're champions, let's be champions in well-being, let's be champions for each other. Thanks, Khalid. And that, it's absolutely, you're, you're absolutely right in terms of just really seeing the, the, the bigger picture of who you are and 
as you were speaking, I think one of the most important things, and as many of us as athletes, is it comes also too down to the belief of, of who you are, the things that you've been given, the opportunity you've been given, the privilege that we, we have as athletes as well um, to be able to, to influence. But I think the, one of the, the key things and one of the key elements that was really important was, and I always talk to young athletes about, is really about belief. Believe in who you are, belief in that, in, 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 in what you have, and belief because when the world stops believing in you in terms of your athletic ability, you've got to continue to believe. And it's the same when you transition into, into life as well. And so, in, if, in fact, in anything in essence of love, really wanting to continue to go through things and um, is really the belief in who you are. Everything that you have, everything even in our conversation that we've talked about, being anchored are really key and things that are important. But also to, to and what we say and so often in, in sport in New Zealand, that you've got to back yourself. Mm. And I think that's really important to really back yourself, to believe in yourself. And that's a continue to follow through in many of the things that you need to to get through today, whether it's you influencing others or you just leading self, is continue to have that belief in yourself and back yourself, um, um, and, and particularly in these times as well. So very, very still important as we were with athletes, still important today, back yourself. Arani, I love that winning strategy of belief and bank and back yourself. And, and team, I just want you to hear that really as we go forward, it's about being for ourselves from a well-being perspective, backing ourselves, as Arani said it so beautifully, and also being for each other. Can we really step into the muscle of practice, 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 self-compassion, and that great compassion for our neighbors, our community, our friends? people that we don't even know that are around the world as we step into global well-being, our commitment, the, the things that we're doing and the things that we're not doing, they are for something so much bigger than ourselves. And so, you know, team, make sure that you go out and you make today a 10 for you. I love uh, Ronnie's really just heartfelt conversation. And um, team, it's up to us now to go out and live a 10 day and make sure that, that we take the winning strategies that matter to us and really start to implement them into our life. Thank you, Arani, for a 10 conversation. Awesome. Thank you for the privilege of being with you, Carla, and all of our people listening in too. Thank you for listening. We'd like to get you coached up, so head over to iTunes and Spotify and hit subscribe. And remember, a champion life is a 10 life. You and your life matter. Create a life that you love. Give hope to others and be and choose nothing but tens. Be you. The world needs you. Go to lifetrainingacademy.com to start your training and get coached.